we're going to talk about file systems, ZFS, of course, my use case, and some Q&A around them. Talking about file systems, what are they? They are actually just some magical layer between your physical media and your data. They just stick your data, put it on your hard drive, your CDs, your flash, whatever it is, and of course, gives you back. But the key word here is the organizer. It doesn't only store your data and gives you back. It organizes it. And on the basis of organization and level of organization, it gives rise to multiple file systems. And what are these organization features? It could be efficient use of storage, access controls, integrity insurance, portability performance, and compatibility. What are these efficient use of storage? It could be you give a one gigabyte of document to it, and it compresses it to 500. So it can effectively use uh, bandwidth of your so slow drives, because it has to just store 500 megabytes of data and then fetch 500 megabytes of data only. Access controls, as you know, user group uh, levels or a user level access control, only this specific person can access it, or maybe some encryption as well. Integrated insurance is the most important to me when it comes to photos or data which can't reproduce. What I stored on it should be exact, stay exactly the same what I stored, and when I ask for it, it should come back. It should not be like half of images corrupted or not. Portability is an important factor. What will happen if you remove a physical media from your computer, take it somewhere else, or just replug it? And performance, it is a very bad file system. If I give it a gigabyte of file, it compresses it, compresses it to one megabyte, but takes 10 hours to do so. Compatibility, of course, between different systems. It works on my Mac, my Linux, my Windows. Will it support them, or it will be like completely invisible? How much will be the compatibility of a file system? will be. On the level and degree of these features, it gives rise to different uh, file systems. And ZFS takes most of them and, and with a very good score. Talking about ZFS, what ZFS is actually? It is all, uh, before known as Zettabyte file system. In 2001, Sun Microsystems created in for Solaris. Then in 2005 to 2010, they open source ZFS under Open Solaris Smart. And so does so many Fox came for Linux, Mac, and FreeBSD. Unfortunately, after like five years, it got closed uh, source when Oracle brought Sun. But people keep continue to work on Fox and derivatives. And in 2013, OpenGFS was officially announced as an open standard for ZFS. And 10 years later, here we are in 2023 with a stable ZFS on Linux and so many other places. A ZFS can do so many things, but these are some of my favorite, which attracts me to ZFS. And then these were the main things which attracted me to uh, learn more about ZFS. And I am speaking about it, uh, endorsing the ZFS to, for you to use ZFS. First is self-healing. If anything got corrupted, which is very rare, but unacceptable in case of photos, because I want my memories to stay forever, it will auto heal the data. It will check, uh, do the checksum, error correcting code, and do the correction on its own. No manual crones or nothing. And then the data related features. Uh, BTRFS covers most of them, but not all. And these are caching, encryption, data compression, data deep duplication, copy on write, and snapshot. And what these are? Let me start with the encryption, which seems to be the most important feature of a file system to me. Before ZFS, I was using Lux to keep everything encrypted on REST. I don't want anyone to look, uh, look into my files, what actually is on my media. It could be like anyone just breaks in or takes my drives, or I don't want people to lock into my data. So encryption is provided by the ZFS. It's a little different from Lux because in uh, Lex, this is complete. You can't uh, look into how much storage is used, which files are there. But on ZFS, your stats like which files are there, files names are, and uh, storage utilization is visible to everyone, but they can't look into the data without a valid decryption key. Then the most important part of ZFS, which makes it different, is copy on write. Whenever you give it some data to write on the drives, it never overrides the previously written data. It's create a new copy, so you can just go back in time if you have accidentally deleted anything or overrided something. It just happens, so you just delete 
sometimes delete the pro database and we never have a backup because backup was on the server. So in that case, your copy on write is very useful. We can do snapshots like this is my photos. Take a snapshot very, uh, every month, every week, or every day. If I do anything new on this partition, it will be a new copy, new copy, and new copy, and I can just jump back to any one of them. And then the compression part. There are very few file systems which provide encryption and compression on the same with performance benefits. ZFS does it very well, and in real life, I have only got a uh, compression ratio of 1.5 because media are very hard to compress, but it does compress my documents, backups, and so on. And then caching. So ZFS is very performant, and while and caching is a core part of it. So ZFS maintains two levels of caches, level one and level two. Level one stays in the memory, your RAM. So everything you write or uh, reads comes, uh, goes first to your memory, and then every sequential reads goes from the memory. So it doesn't matter how slow your drive array is, or if you are writing to floppy drives or tapes or whatever, your reads will come from the memory. And it is recommended that for every terabyte of storage you have in your array, you should have a gigabyte of memory for it. But you will say, ah, memory is very costly. How will I bring so many gigabytes for my petabyte of storage? Then there comes the second layer of the caching in ZFS. And second layer could be anything, more disk, dedicated disk, uh, SSDs, flash, or more memory on some PCI cards. And so does I do. I have a limited RAM and then a separate dedicated SSD for reading. And you can do a separate read cache and write cache, because it can take time uh, for your writes to complete, uh, for, for on your final media, which could be your hard drives, very slow, but you might need to send the acknowledgement to the client that that write has been done. You can proceed. And meanwhile, ZFS will take care of copying from the write cache to your permanent storage. These are your file system things. Then the volume manager thing is phenomenal. You must have used LVM to manage uh, so many hard drives in a one pool and do virtual stuff on it. ZFS provide does, you can bring in a bunch of drives, make pools on it, and do whatever you want to do on top of it. That's level one uh, volume management. Then second layer is when you are done with it, you have created a pool, you can create virtual drives on your ZFS pool and can install other file systems on it, like for uh, iSCSI protocols. I have virtual drives on it, uh, iSCSI drives on it, with the thin provisioning, compression, encryption, everything that ZFS provide, and then on top of it, it has NTFS, because Windows drives uses it on the network. And I feel no lag, it's even faster than the hard drive, it's all depend on the network latency I have. This is my use case, what I do with the ZFS, this is my personal NAS, so I keep doing stuff which I am not supposed to do in my home lab, more on that in my next talk on Poxmox. So this is how I have organized. I, on the hardware side, I have a Chrome box do, doing all the virtualization. And it is running on OpenVidia Vault, Debian. And it has two four terabyte of hard drives in RAID 0 and one 500 uh, gigabyte of SSD for read caching. So very first on the top, it's spinning rust is the pool of eight terabytes because it's a hard drive, it's, it's, it's rusty, it's slow, and it spins. And you can see it uh, reads as 7.12 terabytes. Then if you see iSCSI games, that my Steam volume. It's an iSCSI drive, it directly connects to my Windows machine on a network, and every game feels native. It doesn't feel that the games are not in my computer itself. It's streamlined. And then I have File systems. File systems are just data set which is are created under a pool, and each data set can have its own properties for the ZFS file system. You can control the compression, the encryption, or any other settings for this. So I have done some organization here. First, I have created personal to keep all the personal stuff for the different users. Right now, I'm the only user, in, so in personal, there's Chira, and then I have documents, downloads, memories, and the memory part is the most important one for me. 
that has compression disabled because it doesn't make any sense to compress photos and videos. It does just only waste CPU for me, but I don't want to lose anything on. So snapshots, very critical. It has a write access to it. Only a certain usernames can write to memories. I don't want someone to go just and delete all. You can do read-only stuff there. Downloads have, uh, I guess, compression on. I don't remember. But documents surely have a high ratio of compression on. And everything is encrypted. And uh, NFS is enabled on this directory with my credentials. So NFS is not a part of ZFS, but they are easily configurable. You can easily set that uh, NFS will access this Jira user group. Uh, each, doc uh, each file system is a separate, uh, you say virtual drives there, but you can mount, mount them as a fol folder, or can separately mount them in NFS with different credentials. And then there's a public part. The public, I want all the network IoT devices on my network to access this at least read-only mode or write-only mode that doesn't have those strict policies doesn't have compression as well, I guess. And everyone uses it in my network. Then the Proxmox part. So the Proxmox is a cool story. So the uh, Proxmox hosts Open Media Vault. Open Media Vault has all the drives. And then Open Media Vault gives back uh, virtual storage to Proxmox to run other your know, containers and virtual drives. So it's a mess thing. I don't think so. It's the best way to do this, but it works. Any questions regarding this? Yes. Mike. So uh, ZFS is a very good file system in terms of you can say it will provide your redundancy. Mm -hmm. It will create a pool and you will have the redundancy as well as the performance. But compression and those stuff is taking more amount of memory. The mm -hmm. memory consumption is very high. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Linux 6.6 .6 kernel, which has just evolved, so mm -hmm. XFS has got the feature, which is that online repairing feature, which mm -hmm. no other file system has. Mm -hmm. So how ZFS is going to improve those things? Oh, so ZFS is memory hungry for sure. I don't think it is planning to reduce on that, because ZFS is more tend for the organizational stuff for your NAS, which have a ton of memory, uh, and not for your personal devices, which may have a limited amount of memory. I am not sure how maintainers are going to do that optimization, but it is very optimal. It's not the best memory utilization, but it's decent. I only have a 16 gigabyte of memory on my NAS, uh, so on my Proxmox, and I gave it uh, like 12 gigabytes on it, and it works. Because memory is not the constraint on my NAS. Uh, the network is one gigabit per second. So it makes sense. Mike is not working. Okay, that was better. Uh, I just want to note that ZFS does have ways to tune the memory. Um, it comes by default. I think it uses like a quarter of your RAM to do mm -hmm. caching, but you can actually configure that to do more or less if you want to. And also the caching, it's caching. So if you need more RAM on your server, ZFS will release the memory that it has. So it's just a bit more aggressive in caching, so it's faster. But you can switch that off. Yep. Adding to that, you can just increase your cache to a certain data set or the whole pool. And then the level two cache is there. You can add more hard drives or SSDs, and it will get your job done. Do we have any more questions? So, hey, uh, I'm Charles. So, how long did you take to set that up? Uh, you said you had a previous setup with LVM and LUTs encryption, and how, how difficult it was to migrate, and if people were willing to do it, uh, can we find a lot of documentation and all mm -hmm. that? Very good question. So, it took me a few months to do this because I was not doing it right way. I started, my goal was to make a NAS system, and then, of course, on ZFS, and I only have one hardware, a Chromebox, and a couple of drives. Uh, limited hardware, not the very good approach. So I started with TrueNAS, I guess, FreeBSD solution. It has a very good support for OpenZFS, but the problem was I'm using USB 3 hard drives, 
there were no SATA. And in FreeBSD, I was having some pro uh, problems with the USB 3 drivers. I tried to debug it. I was unable to. So I moved to uh, Open Media Vault. And one more thing, Open Media Vault, if you want a ZFS support, you have to use the Proxmox kernel. So Proxmox kernel has the modules covered for your ZFS support. And so first I got on the Open Media Vault, I learned how to configure that for the optimal performance. I moved the kernel to the Proxmox kernel on it, and then the ZFS part. So the Open Media Vault doesn't have a very good GUI for the ZFS configuration. So most of the stuff was like on command line and hitting train try things. And setting up ZFS was fairly easy. The, the, uh, the thing which took me most of the time was configuring NFS on it. So Z uh, Open Media Vault comes with its own NFS implementations. ZFS also provide uh, auto NFS configuration, and they were colliding. But it's very easy. Once you get used to it, you know what actually ha uh, you have to add it. So in Open Media Vault, you have data sets. Data sets have a property. And then there you can just put a read-only user this and write, and that's fairly easy. It's like the learning curve is steep, very steep, but once you know what you are doing, it's fairly easy. You can set up new uh, devices in a day. Do you use the Debian package uh, for ZFS? And how is it differs from upstream? Um, Mm. So I'm not sure if it's in Debian because I use Open Media Vault Package Manager and it has a, a ZFS support package. Most probably it is coming from Debian because the op uh, Open Media Vault is based on Debian. Um, I was curious about how you uh, set up this Open NAS setup and like maybe any guides for someone who is starting new. Ah. So this is more about setting up how you set up a home lab or virtualization. That I will cover in my next talk, which is on Proxmox. Yes. OK. Uh, that's all. We are about time. Thanks, Chirag, for the talk. Thanks and for coming.